Let's pray. Father, we thank you and bless you for this morning. We thank you for the, everything you're doing for us. And we are grateful. The future is certain because you, God, are with us. We stand for you. We stand for God. Grant us ears to hear. And above all, give us understanding to apply what we hear in our personal lives. Teaching is meant for us to walk in it. And when we walk in it, we see fruit. We're so grateful for this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, thank you. All those that are listening by television or whatever platform you're listening, it's an exciting year, 2021. And um, the 21, you see, in, when you are praying and fasting, we say three days fasting, seven days fasting, 14 day fasting, 21 day fasting, 21 day fast, 28 day fast. So this is part of God's system, 21. And majority of us, we fast for 21 days. So this is a year that has been created for you. It's not a wrong year. It is not a hard year. It is a wonderful year. Just stand for God. The world has turned against God. The signs are there for all of us to see. The world has turned against God. In the book of Exodus 32, verse 26, somebody else to read, please. Exodus 32:26. Exodus 32, verse 26. Then Moses stood in the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together to him. Yes. It says, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, because down, they had made a golden calf. And he saw people worshiping the golden calf. And he, Moses declared, because he was with God on the mountaintop. He had to tell everyone, whoever is for God, join me. All the tribes of Israel were there. The whole entire Jewish nation was there. Only one tribe, the tribe of Levi, came to him. The question is, why did the other tribes not go to where Moses was? Why did not they not agree for the call of God? I'm here to tell you, family, time is running out. Turn to God. Stop playing. Stop playing. Stop entertaining yourself with something that does not bring you closer to God. Come to God. I say again, turn to God. There is really no problem for you to turn to God. Concerning the world, the signs are there. I don't have to tell you. You yourself, you have passed through a lot of the signs that are hap what is happening in the whole entire world. They seem to be lacking leadership. Everywhere. There's no country can say, I can go there. That's why every country has locked themselves in the nation. But even though we are locked, it doesn't mean now live in fear. No. All this, it has been brought about by God. Though man is involved, but God has allowed it. Everything in the world, 
Nothing happens without the express permission of God. Because there's a purpose you are not aware of. You are not aware why he allowed such a thing to be born here on earth. But he's telling you the honor of the world is coming. Prepare his way. If not today, when? You have lived all your life, man, as God, and it was grace. You cannot dribble God. You are wasting your time. You are not going to succeed because you are abandoning God. And in this time, it's not also time to be lazy. No. Laziness is a secret ingredient that goes into failure. Laziness is a secret ingredient that goes into failure. But laziness is only kept a secret from the person who fails. It's a secret to the one who fails. He doesn't know why he's failing, but it's laziness. When you sit down, more so now in the lockdown, you can realize and you do realize fully well that your troubles arise from laughing when you should be working. You are in bed the whole day. You are sit, sitting down in a sitting room, just changing channels, changing channels. This is laughing. This will bring trouble to you. You should be working with your mind. What can I do? Companies are closing down. Business are closing down. But you got the brain. You have the brain. You can do something. Stop looking at your former life because of jacket and tie. This is time now like the children of Israel were crossing over into Israel at the Jordan River. They were told, before crossing, by their leader, Mana time is over. Cross over, fold your shirt, and work. In the land of milk and honey does not mean you love. It was Joshua who told them. Time is over for leisure and pleasure. You won't have a meal from heaven now. Go in there, cross over, work. It's out of work you produce honey. Out of work you produce milk. Out of work you produce your, the life you desire to have. No matter how great you are at loafing, you are not going to be rich. Nothing. Loafing does not make anyone rich. You are going to be more miserable. This season, stop talking and start listening. You talk too much. Instead of listening and talking, how can you improve? There is no security on this earth. Great and young, old, poor, whatever, we are all leaving this earth one by one. There is no security on this earth. 
What is he on earth? On opportunity. Not security, just opportunity. Deal with your fear to be a partaker in these opportunities. Fear is worse than the devil. Fear is worse than the devil. We fear to fail. We hide failure. We deny failure. We fear failure. We ignore failure. We hate failure. I'm here to tell you, the person who never made a mistake never did anything. Never did anything. It's worse than someone who's failing because he's trying to do something. But if you just want, I don't want to make a mistake, yes, die. Just die. Because that's not a life. Even when it looks like a failure, God is trying to tell you something. It is impossible, even in the lockdown that we are in, it is impossible to succeed without suffering. You cannot succeed without suffering. For example, a lot of you are youthful, a lot of people in the world now, there are many young people who are, who are successful and have not suffered. When you look at a young person who is successful and have not suffered, it should tell you one thing. Someone else suffered for this one. That's all. This, they don't know suffering. But someone, other mother, father, whoever in their family, whoever in their lineage, suffered for this one. They don't know suffering. There are people like that, yes. Again, for you and those listening by television, if you are suffering without succeeding, perhaps someone will succeed after you are gone. That's all. You are suffering for someone who's coming behind you who will be a success. There's no success without suffering. The greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. They're just hopeless. The person who risks nothing, does nothing, has nothing, and is nothing. I repeat it again. The person who risks nothing, does Nothing has nothing and he is nothing. And there are many nothing people. There are many nothing people. They are just talking, talking, talking. Forget past mistakes. This is 2021. 21 is prophetic. Winners don't quit. Winners don't quit. 
to accept failure as final is to be finally a failure. Very good. Very, very good. To accept failure as final is to be finally failure. Even in this lockdown, people are coming up with ideas. People are succeeding. But you say, when is the president going to speak that you are free? You are free already. Amen. That's it, you are free. The president did not say stop thinking. The president did not say stop working. The president never mentioned stop imagining you being a success. He never said that. If you are planning nothing now, even when this thing is lifted up, you will still be nothing. You are on pause. You are on hold. When you are released, what are you going to do? The world is full of unsuccessful people with talent. The world is full of unsuccessful people with talent. What we need now to succeed in the current position we are in, persistence, determination are key to making a difference. Stop admiring successful people. Become one. Successful people don't have four legs. They have got two like you and me. Successful people don't have eight eyes. They go two like you and me. Everything is just like you and me. But they are determined and they are persistent to make a difference. In times of failure, look to God, the chief motivator. In times of failure, don't look to man, look to God, the chief motivator. For failure does not mean I'm a failure. Failure does not mean I have accomplished nothing. No. When there's failure, it tells me I have not yet succeeded. I have not yet succeeded. That's all. I'm not a failure. At least I've learned something. Failure does not mean you have been a fool. It doesn't. Because there are a lot of us who fail, even to say, what are you doing? Oh, I'm trying, every, I'm trying small, small. How can you say small, small, but you want what you're doing to be your livelihood? You are prophesying the size of your business, small, small. Well, no, I'm, I'm really trying to put everything in my business here because I want this business to be generational. Because everything big starts. So why are you saying small, 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 small every time? Speak. Your desire. Failure does not mean you're disgraced. 
or you are disgraced. No. And these are the things that a husband, a wife cannot feel free in the house. My husband, you told me that you are, you'll be selling mangoes now. How is it going? No, the truck is still in Impopo. Three months. Why not say it came, I gave someone to sell, but he never gave me the money. We want to try another one. No one on this planet Earth except Jesus started and he never failed. Except Jesus. The rest, failure is part of our DNA. But you reduce the failure DNA in your body as you are persistent. As you increase your determination. And failure does not mean you are in failure. You are not in failure. Failure does mean I'm not perfect. There's somewhere I miscalculated. And failure doesn't mean I've wasted my time. It doesn't mean that. It does not mean that. Failure tells me I have an excuse to start all over again. Now I've got an excuse to start all over again. Failure does not mean give up. Give up. No, no, no. no. And be very careful when you're establishing yourself, the people that you surround yourself with. Be very, very careful. You watch. When you read scripture, there's a time the wealth of the wicked will be turning to the righteous. Now, it doesn't mean that the wicked will knock at your house and say, here is one billion. No, there should be a channel that this money will be processed. You got business, just a small painting that give you two million. Just a small field, because God just wants to find a channel. But if you got nothing, only, I know prayer, prayer is key, and I shall, I shall touch there. You can just be, Lord, you know, uh, I want to be a big businessman, big businesswoman here in the country, whereby, you know, a lot of people are losing work, Lord. I want to employ 50,000 people. Then from there, you're going to bed and you are snoring. Look at this man. I am fasting to be this and this. When you look at such a one, find out where they have food in the house. Is this not fast, forced fasting? Because there's nothing to eat. Then you say you're fasting. You have to have vision. Vision brings into one's life behavior. Because the way I'm behaving, I cannot achieve. I got to change the way I'm behaving. I got to change the way I'm looking at things. I got to change my friends around me. Because I've been having these friends for the past 10 years, and we were always saying, we shall buy a house one day. You know, it's not yet time to buy a house. It's not yet 10 years. There's something wrong. So when you fail, okay, I was trying to put the, what is this, the table together, but it broke. The next time, I'll try harder to put it together. I started praying, five minutes I slept. Okay, I'm not a failure in prayer. Tomorrow, I'll put my legs in water and start praying. I won't, you cannot sleep when your legs are in cold water. You'll be talking something. Tell you never. <laughs> you can't.
you cannot sleep. It's, un, it's uncomfortable. You, look, don't, you can pray in all manner of prayer. Even what you call traditional. Traditional prayer is prayer. Pray it. Continue. Holy Spirit will teach you as you go on to reach your Father. Sometimes we fail because we lack patience. We are in a hurry. We lack patience. And failure does not mean you go to abandon God. That's how it is. The world is a narrow bridge. Very narrow. And the most important thing right now, the whole world over, is not to be afraid. Don't be afraid. This thing is happening everywhere throughout the world. Job said, the thing I feared most has come upon me. What are you fearing most now? Because that's a fertilizer of what will happen. You have to disconnect and approve that thought that is not positive. Take it away. Fight it. Fight it. Because all of us, we should approach the future with hope and joy. Not because I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have... No, no, no. Approach your future with hope and joy. King David prayed, and I love his prayer, in Psalm 90, verse 15. And he said... Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us. Make me, O oh Lord, glad according to the many years, according to the many days, according to the many weeks in which you have afflicted me. The years in which you have seen evil. Make us glad. Equal those years. The years of pain, the years of evil, the years of hopelessness, the years of no, no nothing happening. Equal it now with gladness. That is. My prayer to you and those that are listening is that may God grant you long and healthy life. Full of joy and happiness. That's all. Oh, you need to pray now. Length of days. How do you go to the length of days? Our main weapon in this world is prayer. It's not talking. It's not complaining, running around. Prayer. All the battles that have been are aligned for you. You can only win all those battles by prayer. All victories that you will achieve, you will achieve them by prayer. And this is the last thing we look at. When one prays, it is a sign of faith. I can't do it. But, ah, Lord, you can do this. I put my hope and trust in you. It is a sign of faith. Genuine faith. And what people don't know, prayer increases faith. Your faith cannot increase minus prayer.
God can and will perform miracles for those whose prayers are filled with faith. It's not just wishing miracle. No. God can and will perform miracles for those whose prayers are filled with faith. No doubt in it. Nothing can help a person break his unwanted desires except by prayer. Nothing can help a person break his unwanted desires except by prayer. Because a lot of us we are trying to fulfill our destiny on theory. This, this, this. You are trying to fulfill your destiny on theory. You are joking. To fulfill anything, it takes work. This is your habit you want to break. Hello? This. Don't look at it now, but this is your habit, your, 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 your thing that is in you. When you, on your own, you break. It was one, now, after breaking, they become two. You have broken, it's true, but they are now two. It's only prayer that clears all this out. Look, the thing you pray, you break man as prayer, it multiplies. Hmm. Hold on to the Lord. Read for me Isaiah 49 verse 15. This is, but I prayed for this thing to be broken. Now it has, it's many now. Huh? You didn't know what you are doing. You broke it, man, as prayer. It might apply now. It has got sons and daughters, grandchildren. Yes. Isaiah 49 verse 15. Yes. Can a woman forget her nursing child mm -hmm. and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely. Surely they may forget, but yet I will not forget you. That is, it's for you. You are quiet. Ah. I think you are talking to other people. Read again Isaiah 49, 15. Isaiah yeah. 49, verse 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child mm -hmm. and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget. Yet I will not forget you. That's what he's saying. Yet I, God Almighty, will not forget you. Hold on to the Lord. No matter how you feel, no matter how bad things are, hold on to God. God will manifest his power. God will manifest his power. And since birth, my life with God Almighty, God never disappoints anyone. He never. God, when you trust him, he removes mountains for you. Things you never thought that they can happen. God does it. All the promises that you see in the Bible, they apply to your particular situation. 
He did not just put those things there for fun. This morning, I'm telling you, God is yearning to intervene in your impossible situation. If you hold on to him, not a chancer, not a chancer. Those dilemmas you are in, those problems you are in, God desires to intervene. Psalm 148, verse 5. Psalm 148, verse 5. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Again. Psalm 148, verse 5. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. I can't hear you, sir. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Louder. Psalm 148, verse 5. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Amen. Just one word from him, that is all you need. Amen. One. Not the vocabulary, vocabulary for God. No. One word from him. Psalm 147, verse 4. Psalm 147, verse 4. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Think about it. Don't say amen. Think about it. Close your eyes. Imagine the stars of the whole universe. In fact, you can't see the whole universe. You only see where you are. Where you are, that's all. And even where you are, the more you are counting, the more dizzy you become. You cannot even reach one million. And God knows the name of each star is huge. I'm asking you, what big problem are you facing right now that is too hard for God? What? You can't even mention five stars. You can't, giving them your own name. You can't. What problem are you facing? Why are you nursing your problem instead of problem to go so that you start living? Is there anything too hard for God? You are always repeating the same problem. Look, 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 please. Have you committed this problem entirely to God? And what did he say? God promised Abraham to make him a father of many nations. Even though he was an old man, married to Sarah, self old and barren, God promised Abraham, I'll make your offsprings to be numerous when he had nothing. That's God. God speaks before it is visible. To test your trust. Because whatever God has said about you, it will be challenged. Genesis 13, verse 16. Genesis 13, verse 16. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. That's God telling Abraham when he has got nothing, he's old. Uh, he forgot about even having a child. Genesis 15, verse 5. Genesis 15, verse 5. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. It took him out. Faith is work. For him now to realize, it took him out from his sleep. He said, come outside, Abraham. Look, number these, count them. Count them one by one, one by one. He started one, two, three, four, five. 
some of them were just omitting the number to fill it up because it was all in heaven. And God just said, tells him, that's how your descendants shall be. God determines the number of the stars and calls each by name. Stars don't just manifest. It's him who determines them. And he calls each one by name. Even in your own working place. You don't know everyone. You say, oh, remind me, I've forgotten. You are Mr. Mr. We work together. You are Mr. Can't you see? Oh, sometimes you meet somebody on the street. You say, ah, I remember you. I saw you from somewhere. Why can't you not remember why you saw his name and all? Your capacity is too low. What huge problems are you facing that are too hard for God? Whereby you say, mm, this one, oh, God can't handle. When you fail to handle your own problems, it doesn't mean God also will fail. Leave it to God. You are limited. God is unlimited. God has in mind things you cannot see. For you, he has them in mind. There's no time to lose hope. Believe God. Trust God. Stop crying in this season. It's not a mistake we are, we are in. We have to overcome. We have to go the other side with all things against us. Yes, go to the other side with God. Stop crying. Stop murmuring. Stop transporting your problems to everyone. God is going to give you a master class breakthrough. It's God, not man. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Hebrews 13, verse 5. <laughs> Let your conduct be without covetousness. Uh -uh. It mustn't be there, covetousness. Nothing. Yes, continue. Be Let. content with such things as you have. That's all. When you are content with the things you have, how can you have one eye there, one eye there? It can't. I'm happy with what I have. This is grace of God. The things I have, someone somewhere in the world is praying for the same things. But me, I say, what is this? That's why God cannot intervene in your situation. Be content. This is enough. Be content with one pair of shoes. It's okay. God will give me. When he says this one was over, he'll give me. Because what we are living with now is greed. Greed. We are full of covetousness. So we fail to see the handiwork of God in our lives. A lot of things, for example, the thing that God was supposed to do a miracle for you, you went and got credit to buy them. God was supposed to show his greatness over these chairs you bought. God was supposed to fill your dining room. But you went and bought king-sized dining room that it would take you 15 years to finish. What miracle come? Nothing. You are always complaining. Always complaining. God is saying that and is not a lie. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Why not trust him? And God will never fail you. At whatever age you are at, young and old, God never fails anyone who put their trust in him. He never. 
Students are looking for intelligence, pray to God. Intellect, God will increase it. Old person who's so messy is looking for wisdom. God will grant you wisdom. Ask him. And it's not a one-day issue. Over and over until your heart is in line with what you are asking in line with God. Then answer come. Isaiah 64 verse 4. I love this one. Isaiah 64, verse 4. Yes. For since the beginning of the world, uh -huh. men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, mm -hmm. nor has the eye seen any God besides you, who acts for the one who waits for him. Ah. Who acts for the one who waits on you, Lord. Speak, sir. Uh, read again, sir. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4. This answer to your life situation right now. Have you been waiting genuinely to see the handiwork of God in your situation? And when he comes through, no eye ever perceived, no ear ever heard, no mouth uttered what God does for those who wait for him. Read, sir. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard mm -hmm. nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for him. Anyone who waits upon God will never be ashamed. Never. Never. People might say wishful thinking and don't know. No, don't shake. Don't be scared. This world is a narrow bridge. And God is watching you. That's all. When God is watching, you say, who? Oh, this man, this lady, 10,000 people know that she trusts me. I cannot let her down. I'll come through to silence all this, to glorify his name, to sanctify his name. How will people believe in God? It's by you standing for God. Then because of that stand, people will be converted. They say, truly, there's a living God. I'm here to challenge you as I'm closing. No man, no woman, no child has ever been laid down by trusting God. Never. Unless you trust in other things, it wasn't God. No man, no woman, no child has ever been laid down. Because they trusted in God. Because I trust in God, I'm now poor. Because I'm trusting God, I'm now sickly. Because I'm trusting God, this is happening. Never. Never, never, never. God says, I know who am I. He has put them on the palm of his hand. No one can snatch them from here. He is almighty. He is the great one. He is the creator. He is the beginning and he's also the end. God is the complete alphabet. He lacks nothing. 1 Samuel, chapter 1, up to the end of the book. Yes. 1 Samuel, chapter 1, from verse 1. Now there was a certain man of Ramathaim Zophim, of mm -hmm. the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jer Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. Yes. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Peninnah. 
Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from the, his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Yes. Also, uh, can you hear that? A kind of now. One no child, one with child, is from the tribe of Ephraimite. He jans to Shiloh. Many of you, you saw the mountains of Ephraim when you were in Shiloh. That is real when you go to Israel. They, they are there. So I don't understand why people cannot believe. Even when they were coming, there were mountains and valleys, they were coming to Shiloh, which was up to meet with Prophet Samuel. Oh. A lie, a lie. This is real. It's not a made-up story. It's talking about our situation, your situation, someone else's situation. One has got children, one has got no children. But the one trusted in the Lord. Continue. Also, the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion. For he loved Hannah although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival also provoked her severely. You hear that? Who is provoking you? Her rival. There's someone provoking you. Year in, year out. When you come to church, you are provoked. Wherever you want to do something, whenever you want to do something, you are provoked. Whenever, whatever you want to do, you are provoked. It's God's plan. God is involved. Yes, please. Verse 6. And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord mm. that she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. You hear that? That Hannah now no offspring of her own, weeping and unable to eat. But you have come to worship and sacrifice. But the opposite was happening to her. But she was focused. You, because you are lacking a lot of things, you lose focus. You concentrate on your rival. You concentrate on someone who causes you pain instead of focusing on God who has caused this one, the messenger, to torment you. She cannot stop. But when you go to God, God will tell her to stop. And whatever could be the issue, when you go to God, this one tells you the provocation is not to destroy you, but the provocation is for you to look to God. Though she doesn't know, or he doesn't know what he's doing. Continue, sir. Verse 8. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Yes. Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Mm -hmm. Am I not better to you than ten sons? So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in yes. Shiloh. Yes. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Yes. Then she made a vow and said, O oh, Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me, and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. Amen. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. That, that was a vow she made. In the midst of pain, she didn't know what God 
was about to do. Samuel, in the midst of your downfall, in the midst of your hopelessness, in the midst of whatever you are passing through, you got no clue what God is about to do. It's no time to distance yourself from God. It is time to close the gap that was there between you and God. Penina was just an instrument in the hand of God to let Hannah go to the high priest, to, the, to go to the tabernacle. That's all. We will look at the instruments that God is using and we complain about them. You cannot seek God in comfort. Man seeks God when he has got trouble. And that's why a majority of the people, when God raises them up, they abandon God. They only remember when they are down again. Stand with God in lack and in plenty be the same because they all come from God. They all, both of them come from God. Hannah went. She went alone. She didn't say, how many are, come, are going to accompany me? I'm going out to the tabernacle. They were camping around Shiloh. They are not camping in comfort. They came to the house of God, to the tabernacle of God. They had tents around so that now she says, "None. Nah, look, we had our meal, a kana. I am now going. Look, I've got a heavy heart. It's paining me. I'm going to the house of God. It doesn't say that the husband accompanied. She went there alone when she found a lie outside the tabernacle. And when you are going to the house of God, you don't go because of pride or anything. You go there because you are broken and you don't know where to turn to. This is the vessel that God hears. This is a vessel that God will answer. Continue. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. Yes. And no razor shall come upon his head. Look, already she hasn't got a child, but she has got, she's making all the vows. That's a vow. The Nazarene vow. No razor will be upon this child. No one in the family will say anything. Because this is a child of promise. You can't just be loose with the child of promise. There's a vow that was made. We'll stay in the house of, in the tabernacle of God. No razor she, shall be upon him. That's a Nazarene vow. The child before is born even. A vow has been made. What type of vow was given over your life that up to now the cases are failing to break? What vow? What vow did your mother, father make on your behalf before you were born? You need help. You have tried everything. It does not come together. There's a vow, promise upon you. Hannah went to a prophet of God, Eli. Where did our parents go to conceive us? And what vow did they make to the tree? to a human being, to a sangoma, to a small house, to the river, water. What vow do they make for you to be conceived? Because you're failing. You're failing to save in the tabernacle of God. You're running away from the house of God. This child was given there when he was weaned. Samuel, when he was weaned, this Firstborn doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. I made a vow to God. We need three years, somewhere there, three years. Go and stay with Eli in the tabernacle. Three years. The only child. Back to God, not back to the ancestors.
When you lack prayer, you lack peace. When you have prayer, you have abundance of peace. Things do not shake you up. Yes, they are there, they are real. But you pray. You know, this is my weapon. That's the only thing I have. And God granted me this, to believe in him in prayer. When you don't pray, no matter how knowledgeable you are or you have about Bible, still no peace. You know Bible very well, minus prayer, no peace. God is my defense. God is my defense. Anyone who believes in God and trusts God with all their being, they shall not fall to the ground in shame or dishonor. Never. Those who trust in the Lord God Almighty, with everything of who they are, they can never fall down to the ground in shame or dishonor. I'm here to tell you, trust God. Hannah trusted God for the impossible. And she even told God what type of sex the child should be. Male child. Not just child. She was making things difficult on God's side. If you bless, you have to bless me with a male child. Hannah was even accused to say you are drunk early in the morning. Because of anguish of heart. Pain. And who, who, who was doing it? Eli. Prophet Eli says, you are drunk already in the morning. He says, it's not these things that you are thinking. I'm a woman of anguish, full of pain. Maybe the pain and all the anguish, they have caused me to look as if I'm, I'm drunk. I'm not drunk. I'm a very honorable woman. I'm not drunk. Prophet Eli. But what I pass through is too much for me. That's why I've come to the house of God to unburden myself. And Eli said, May God grant you your request. And it was so. What burdens are you carrying? Thinking you solve them. Thinking if I go to my rich uncle to my rich auntie, to so-so, to so-so. You are always avoiding God, creator and maker. I'm here to tell you, I've got no alternative to my life. It's God or nothing. I've got no alternative. I've got only one God, I self. I've got only one God whom I live for. And I tell God everything. Because that's the only one who can handle everything from me. If you cannot turn today, then when? If you cannot surrender today, then when? Which day? We're told in the Bible. When you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like your parents did in the wilderness. It could be your last chance. It could be your last breath this day. When? 
are you going to turn to God? It's up to you. I've not hidden any truth from you. I'm free of any man's blood. Truth I was given, I've declared. If you throw away this truth, the results will be up to you. Before Corona came, you can go to the mortuary. All aid groups are represented at any given time. One day, one day, it's you to represent your age group. Are you ready? No one can run away from death. God knows when you should represent your age group. It's only in God. When you sleep in God, you wake up the other side. I'm telling you now. It's time to go and sit down. The suitcase that you have packed, not going to God, but going to the opposite side of God. Go and pack it and let God pack your suitcase to go to him. Turn, turn, turn. It could be friends. It could be whatever. What are they going to say? They don't hold your life in your hands. No one, no one living can die for his friend. Friendship, you found it here on earth. Question, is it a good one? Is your friendship leading you to God? Or is distracting you from God? Your conscience knows very well whom you should save. Listen to your conscious. Because your conscious is your personal judge. You cannot go wrong when you are following your conscious. I leave you here in faith. Trusting we shall meet again in faith. Shalom.